my appreciation of the Bose is is enhanced by the fact that I see it as as a piece, a significant bit of history, West Coast uh, boating history, but also as a as a uh, I consider it to be art and representational of a period of boating, commercial boating, and then blended with the pleasure side of it. The way it was designed and built, everything's purposeful, but it's also done very artfully. Part of the design, designer, but it was also the builder kept going and then I kept going. Everything I've done is to try and restore the boat back to its basics and not have anything extra on the boat. And uh, so it's not so much about me, as I'm just trying to um, be true to the boat, its design, its purpose. And that was part of the restoration effort on my part was to, to do that. Yeah, there's a boating group, and so the Marineros have been in existence probably for at least 20 years. And the point of the Marineros is just uh, for people who come over here, and they, uh, the members are people who come over here and they see the island uh, for the, for the uh, wonderful natural preserve that it is, and they want to contribute in some way. And so they join the Marineros. And it's, First came to Catalina uh, with my my family on our buddy and shore. our family boats. So my earliest memories as a kid would be uh, in the early 60s, coming over here and going to Avalon, and my father would cruise up and down the island. So it's it's very personal for, for me from a standpoint of growing up around the island. Hundreds of people come to Catalina by boat every weekend, and the majority of them don't engage the island beyond sitting on their boats or perhaps walking on the beach. There's so much more to it. You can really increase your enjoyment of boating in Southern California if you get to know, understand, and perhaps contribute to or participate in activities related to the island and in conservation. Man, look at how they've extended that hard <laughs> top on well, the Conservancy uh, came into being in the 70s. The island was privately held by the Wrigley family, and they had their the Santa Catalina Island Company that was um, in charge of the, sort of the business side, if you will, of the island. So we're going to have to hustle back because we've got to move, but we're beyond our time limit. Okay. I don't want them to impound the Galatea. <laughs> our time limit for the mooring? Yes. Oh, it's like checking into a hotel, isn't exactly. it? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It's checkout time. By taking 88% of the island's 76, 8, 76 square miles into conservation, which is what the Wrigley's did by forming the Conservancy, there we go. it basically preserved the island and held the island in its natural state. That's the wide open Pacific out there. You can see the uh, windward side of the island. When we were cruising by and you could see all the different layers of rock and the different colors of rock on the uh, you know, open sides of the island, the upheaval that occurred during the creation of the island. They once were part of the mainland and broke off and they pretty much concluded that no, they weren't. They were always a separate island out here. And the mystery was how like the woolly mammoth got over there and some of the birds and things and were they able to just walk across because the ocean was down or did they actually swim that land? So the, uh, the actual natural history of the islands really are still a mystery I think to most of the uh, scientists.